you have to grind this in with mix with the, the leaves on that. The nini nini, and I'm a honey hit at nini. As they better the nini to the door, how you didn't answer, but I don't know. I don't know the church at that, eh? Not a git at that, eh? Not to shut that, eh? That door, but I don't know as they better nini. The whole law. Of course, did you see a ID called the awaits out of the day? Had the nini she bear by the wheel net all day. In the traditional teachings of our people, we are told that there are medicines for anything that can be an illness to us in some way. And um, one of the ways that uh, is considered a medicine is of course using of the uh, sweat lodge and that to remove all of the impurities from your, uh, from your body. And also there are herbs and that that come from plants, all different types of plants. And then there are even uh, medicine that can be extracted from some types of insect and even from some of the other creatures and that, birds and animals and so on, that uh, is used for medicine. And the one that we're going to be talking about today is the uh, plant that has the English name of uh, chaparral. But in the language of our people, it's referred to as the the one that acts like the cliff rose. Awaits out at the end. And that is the, uh, the chaparral. Now the chaparral, because it doesn't grow in very many areas, it was a trade item as far as the uh, herbs that are used. And the um, way that we use it are several different ways. I mentioned the sweat lodge. This is uh, an herb that we could take the leaves off of this uh, plant and actually uh, put it in a pot and let it seep. And then after it has uh, seeped for a period of time, then we use it and drink it in, in large quantities before we go into the sweat lodge. Nowadays, most of the time they use sage, uh, and make a sage tea and drink a lot of that as they go into the sweat lodge. But uh, it is also that the uh, chaparral was used in that uh, particular way. And the chaparral actually is uh, probably could uh, Sometimes they would call it a which would mean that, you know, it's a, a laxative and it removes toxins from the body. And they do yash honi, a-a-yahidi as what they tell us is that it was used in a way that it was a, uh, a way to remove toxins from your body. And you use it as a tea. And uh, they tell us not to use it excessively which is something uh, probably you don't use it daily. You use it when you have some discomfort and so on. Or when you actually are uh, doing a detoxification and so on. And then there are other ways than that that the um, chaparral is used. And it, uh, when we used it in that traditional way, uh, we would pulverize it. And actually it could be applied to open sores you uh, take the uh, chaparral and you take these small leaves on that and you can use the leaves or you can use the entire plant. But if you use the entire plant, you have to chop up the stems uh, really fine and even grind it so it's more like a paste. And that was used for open sores. But you also mix a little bit of uh, sap, either from uh, pine or from uh, juniper. And that's just to hold it together so when you apply it to this, the skin, you also put a little layer of uh, the uh, cliff rose bark. A lot of times people think that you can take and, and use juniper bark, but no, you don't use juniper bark, you use the uh, uh, cliff rose. A weight's on, it has bark, and that's what you kind of soften up a little bit by rubbing it, and, uh, and you would then put the, uh, the paste 
of the chaparral mixed with a little bit of sap on top of that and then you would apply that to the open wound or to, to the sore and um, you don't do it continually you only leave it on there for a certain period of time and it uh, supposedly it eliminates the uh, any type of infection so it's like an antibiotic in that uh, uh, to the open wound and after that you take it off and then you let the ex expose it to the uh, air and to the sunlight and let it dry it out really well and that is supposed to heal the wound and so there are many uses for this and uh, it was used in uh, other ways as far as uh, when they would have certain ceremonies and that the uh, chaparral the um, fine ground up powdery form was used in, in uh, certain applications on that during certain ceremonies and uh, because it was something that was not available in so many parts of the reservation that it was a trade item. And here we are, where I admit there are many uh, chaparral growing around here and that's where we're at. And um, we don't like to go into all of the different herbs in that. And there are many that are used for uh, medicinal purposes and actual medicine. And it can also be useful in removing toxic material from the uh, body as uh, a laxative and a detoxifying agent. In the traditional teachings, they say that the medicine of the um, chaparral can be used in various uh, virus and various forms of infection and that, that it can attack the body. And, but those are the things that we were told about the, the way that this is used. But so many of our people have lost the ways in that that we were supposed to use so many of the different herbs. And then of course, so much of the sickness is uh, and that that is prevalent among our people could be eliminated if they did not indulge in so many of the foods that our people are consuming daily. And uh, those foods and that have a lot of additives in it that are very dangerous to the system. And the thing that we cannot share a lot of times is in any way medical advice. We can't do that. And uh, it is that there are some people that have an invested interest and don't like us to mention the, those types of things. But nonetheless, we would like people to understand that Native people, the Dene, the Navajo people, had herbs for so many different ailments and that that are so prevalent here in the world and in, in our, among our people today. And those are the things that we share with you and those are the things that we are told. So when I, well, how do you prepare it? You just take the leaves and... Uh, the leaves is one part. The leaves is one part. And the uh, branches and the stem of that, you have to grind this in with mix with the, the leaves on that, about that much. And that would be in a, a pan of water? With no, it would be just a cup. Just one cup? Maybe a, a two, one or two cups. Does it, does it have to boil or will hot water alone like a tea uh, bag? Just seep it. Okay. Just drop the uh, the leaves into the uh, hot water and let it sit for several minutes. Okay. 30 minutes or so and let it seep. And then you can use a strainer and strain the uh, the uh, leaves on the other part that you throw into the uh, pan. It smells very clean. Hmm. It does have, it does not have any really strong odor, but it does have... It smells kind of like water, too. Yeah, uh, it has a sweet, clean smell. Yeah. And it smells like when you come up to, like, a fresh water. Yeah. Or fresh rain. Not only the leaves and that, but the root are used for medicine as well. But you use the, the root and the heavy branches and the flower and the actual leaves and that of the plant mm. and those are the ways that it is used but it does have a scent that's sweet uh, a clean type of uh, fragrance it does not have a strong uh, you know aroma and uh, it smells friendly <clears throat> It had a blossom at one time, so now it starts uh, to go to seed. And now, so we're in the season where the uh, flower part is gone and then the seed is 
then going to be produced off of this plant. <laughs> Hey, thanks for watching our videos. If you like what you see, don't forget to uh, subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss one of our uploads. Also, head over to our website, NavajoTraditionalTeachings.com. Sign up for our email list. Okay.